receive a link to this webinar uh, recording tomorrow in your email so you can rewatch it. Um, also, uh, you'll receive your uh, evaluation for PD credit if you need those. So uh, you'll get that via email. Um, just a few things before we start. Uh, if you have a question during the presentation, feel free to utilize the, um, the Q&A box at the bottom and you can type your question in there and, and we'll leave that, um, but we will be muted throughout the presentation. And then once uh, Mindy gets done, there is, a, there is a spot for some Q&A so I can unmute you so you can uh, ask those questions at that time. So uh, Mindy, if you're ready, you can go ahead and take over the screen. Okay. And share. Okay, can you see my screen? I can. All right. If you cannot see the opening screen, please send a question to Brian and let him know that we're having a problem with the uh, screen display. Otherwise, I will get started. Hope to have you all off of the webinar um, and finished up by eight, four o'clock today. So gonna keep it short and sweet today. Let's see here, I'm gonna minimize myself. There we go. Um, so welcome to the webinar series. Today we're going to talk about um, E-rate support webinars, in particular, the state matching grant opportunity. Hopefully some of you have heard about the state matching grant through the grapevine. If this uh, invite and advertisement for this webinar was the first thing that you've heard about, hopefully you'll gain a lot of information to get either way. So, let's see here if I can get, there we go. Uh, so my name is Mindy Fiscus. I am the Digital Access Coordinator for the Illinois Learning Technology Center. I'm also one of your two Illinois State E-Rate Coordinators. We have a, another State E-Rate Coordinator at the State Board of Education, Eric Grocki, who is um, also on the webinar with us today. So if you need to reach out to me at any time with your E-Rate questions, that is what I'm here for. You can reach me at mfiscus at ltcillinois.org. And you can also visit our LTC website at ltcillinois.org. I have been doing E-Rate for over 18 years, and um, I'm really excited about the opportunities that we have in front of us due to the modernization of E-Rate and the state matching grant. So I'm happy to be bringing you a series of webinars this year, this one being the first one. Uh, we do have a webinar series offering everything from technical expertise to curriculum integration and E-Rate support, as well as some um, from our staff, as well as some, from some of our partners. So please do check that out. Uh, we're hoping to have a webinar almost every Tuesday of the month. Uh, they will vary on topic. So do check those out and register for the webinars that uh, appeal to you. You can find those on our LTC page under events and conferences. Um, also, uh, we will be sending out notifications of the webinars through our normal distribution channels. How did we all get started here? Uh, we got started here with the state ma match project when uh, Governor Bruce Rauner entered into an agreement uh, with a non-for-profit organization called Education Superhighway in his mission to connect every school district in the state of Illinois to high scalable fiber internet. And so we are looking to meet his goal of having every school district connected by 2020, and the state match was one of the endeavors that we took on as part of that project. So if you are not familiar with the Illinois Classroom Connectivity Initiative, there are multiple partners at uh, play here. It started with the governor's office and the Illinois State Board of Education. And then we also partner with the Department of Innovation and Technology. Some of you uh, will remember and be uh, in contact with the Illinois Century Network, which is part of the Department of Innovation and Technology. It's also been a partnership with the Learning Technology Centers and Education Superhighway for the last few years. Uh, there is a PDF linked at the bottom of this slide, and at the end of the presentation, I'll be giving you a bit.ly if you wanna go out and have the slideshow. Uh, due to bandwidth reasons here in the webinar, we're gonna hold on to that until the end. So this is a uh, classroom connectivity initiative, a couple of years in the works. Several of you have probably heard and had some outreach from either the LTC 
or Education Superhighway. Uh, another result of this initiative are the workshops that we now offer statewide for the 470 and 471 applications for E-Rate. Um, that was an idea that was brought forward by this group and happy to be supporting that as the Digital Access Coordinator. So one of our initiatives was to get some legislation passed for a state match. Uh, USAC opened up in their modernization the opportunity for states to be able to provide some funding for school districts in order to do fiber construction to schools. And so um, our underlying mission with the governor's office was to find a way to make that possible for school districts. Statewide, we heard from schools that one of the hurdles that was in the way was the funding opportunities, that even if they could get USAC funding for their portion of the build, in many, many cases, school districts could not afford their percentage of the cost. And so we petitioned legislation last year with the help of all of our partners to be able to get some legislation passed for that funding. It's been a long time coming. We had to do a lot of conversation on the Hill to get it through, but we're thrilled to announce that we do have now secured funding for that state match. And you can see here um, in the documentation that I have provided in the bills what pages and um, what notations were made by the legislature. Basically to break it down, we had some school districts that applied for state match funding in the last cycle. Um, and we wanted to go ahead and take care of those school districts and their requests. So they went through the application process. They were awarded the grant by the State Board of Education. And then the legislation never passed the funding. And so in order to take care of those school districts, we totaled up the amount that that would cost. And so the sum of $700,000 was distributed to those original applicants. So those 13 applicants have, been, have received funding for the state portion of their builds after the fact. Um, so that was a really good news. In addition to that, the new funding is, uh, that was given to the program is $16.3 million. The $16.3 million is to fund connectivity to school buildings that do not have connectivity currently, or um, there are also applicants that will be accepted in looking at building new WAN connections for their school districts. There are a few of you in looking at the attendee list um, that are panicked at the moment because you'll find that you applied for funding from USAC last year and we have an opportunity for you as well. We'll talk about here in the slideshow. So um, the classroom connectivity initiative when the funding did go through the legislature uh, was granted approval by USAC. And so this comes from the USAC page. If you go to the USAC site and do a search in the corner for state match, you will come up with the um, list of states who are, are um, partners with USAC to offer that state match. And there is a link down here at the bottom of the screen when you get the slideshow to visit that page directly. We just wanted to make sure you had access to the legislation as well as um, the USAC side of the funding for the details on your end when going back to talk to your administration. So the biggest question that comes to me is who is eligible for this funding? So any Illinois public school district is eligible for the funding if they complete the E-rate application cycle. Uh, this funding does depend on E-rate. It covers the non-discounted cost of E-rate, so that's very important. Also, districts have to get special construction. This funding is for the build of a fiber internet connection, not the monthly cost incurred with your connection. So this is not to offset the monthly cost, but the getting of the fiber to the new building. Um, in order to get that special construction, you do have to apply for it on both the 470 and the 471 applications for E-rate. Districts also have to check the state match tribal funding indicator. Um, this is a catch for some of our districts who applied last year, and we think that we have a workaround for you. Um, moving forward, anyone who applies for the state match funding will need to check that box on the 471, and I would be happy to direct you to that box and the questions that follow how to get through those. Priority will be given to school districts with one or more building without scalable fiber connectivity. So as I said at the top of the hour, our mission here is to get school buildings who do not have scalable fiber access, um, scalable fiber access. That is the overall mission. We do believe that there is enough funding in the legislation to provide, applica provide for opportunities for applications for districts in also interested in improving their WAN connections from building to building. 
um, or reducing that cost. Uh, I will tell you, I think that there will be some more questions and hurdles to answer on USAC's end in order to get that funding approved, um, but I do think that there's a possibility for that. So if you are a school district that does have connectivity to all of your buildings, but you'd like to look at some alternatives um, due to reliability or funding, you are also eligible for this grant. E-rate approval will be required for the program, so we will require you to um, go through the E-rate process, apply for that funding, and get commitment from E-rate in order to get the state funds. Previous successes. So I mentioned the 13 districts that were awarded the grant. So I really wanted to let everyone know, because we did have this application process last year, for the districts that were not grant, that did receive the grant, but didn't receive that state funding, they were compensated. So that's excellent. Um, you can check out the ISB website, and they list those 13 districts and who was awarded the funding. So that's, that's good news for them. Um, but we do have some successes behind us, and we're looking forward to more in the future. There are three Illinois state match funding options on the table right now. The first round are applicants who applied last year. So we have a handful of districts who applied last year. They did check the state match box. They did go through the paperwork of filing the um, grant application with the state board and were awarded by the state board. That grant application closed in February of last year. Those districts that were awarded funding are still in the a review process for USAC. So as soon as USAC approves their funding on their end, um, they will be awarded the state grant as well. So they are just on hold there waiting for USAC approval. My understanding is that USAC um, is waiting for FCC approval of um, those projects. And so that is the hold up there. Round two is a small number of school districts last year that applied for state match funding, or I'm sorry, applied for fiber construction funding, so a build to one of their buildings, but did not fill out the state match paperwork. And so if you are one of the school districts who um, did apply for funding for this current school year in FY18 E-rate cycle, and you have special construction needs on your application that you're waiting for approval on, you still have a chance to do, I'm calling it the last chance or second chance grant um, from the State Board of Education. That grant was posted to the ISBE website on Friday. So there is a grant available for you. If you would like to go out and check out that grant, please do reach out to me. I would love to know who is applying for that grant and help you in any way that you can. The deadline for those schools who are still waiting on approval from USAC but did not fill out the state grant is October 22nd. I have a list of those schools to the best of my knowledge that I will be reaching out to this week. So if you are one of those schools, there is still a chance for you. This second chance grant is uh, directed right for that particular group of schools. Now for the big group of funding. Um, round three is what we're calling it. It is the um, availability for any district filing. We expect to see ISB release another round of the grant um, sometime this fall. Uh, so that we will see that application post out. I'm sure there will be news releases and all kinds of information and outreach to let you know that it's available. That application is expected to close in early 2019. Um, you will have to file an E-rate application to match that, and you will have to cite that in your 470 and 471 this year. So that is for any school district who is applying for E-rate services for next school year, the FY19 um, E-rate funding cycle, which is 2019 to 2020. Couple of different things that we've learned from our first round uh, or two of the grant. Uh, there's a little bit of miscommunication on exactly how much money you can get. So I've got a couple of different funding examples here to kind of explain it further. The first one is the total con special construction cost is $100,000 for the project. So to get fiber connectivity to your grade school, the cost comes back and it will be $100,000. I'm keeping it even numbers for easy math. Your normal discount rate on E-rate is 80%. So you are a school district that has 50% or greater free and reduced lunch. You have a normal E-rate discount of 80%. Because USAC has approved our Illinois state match, they are willing to throw in another 10% of funding, which would take you to the 90% or $90,000 mark. And then the ISB state match would match that 10%. 
if this situation was an 80% or a 90% original discount, then it would be five and five instead of 10 here. So this one seems to be very clear on the grant paperwork and we haven't had a lot of questions for situations in this, but I wanted to give you the easy example. The next example I have is the same build amount, but it is a school district that is a 60% discount level. So if your normal discount level is 60% or $60,000, the USAC state mat the portion would still remain at the 10%. 10% is their max um, contribution when it comes to state match. So that would take you to the 70% total, and you are eligible to ask for the entire $30,000 remaining in your project. Some of the schools that applied in the last couple of cycles thought that was 30% of the remainder. So I just wanted to be really clear here. You are eligible to ask for the entire amount to pay for the rest of your build if that's what your school district would like to do. The details, however, are very important. So um, school districts are reporting the PIA review process from USAC has not been that pretty of a review process, and they've had to answer a lot of questions. So I really want to stress that you must put together a plan. Please understand um, the language and the lingo that you're putting together uh, in order to ask for bids and receive those bids. Please also note that you must wait 28 days before selecting a provider. So if we find that the grant application from ISBE, which does require a provider's name, is due um, the 1st of February or something like that, we'll want to count those 28 days back and make sure that we've had our 470 in play at least 28 days. And I'm told we will um, have some guidance on what that deadline will be. Uh, when the grant is released. So we should have enough time for that. So you must file your 470 at least 28 days before selecting a provider and that provider must be listed on the grant application. You must also meet the ISBE state match deadline. So the deadlines are real. Um, whatever deadline that ISBE states, it must be there in their hands. Um, it looks like that they will also be allowing a electronic version or um, upload of the plan moving forward. So that's good news as well for those of us who have always dealt with the United States Postal Service to get our information to the state board. Uh, you must file a 471 by the March 20th deadline. So you do have to meet the E-rate deadline. It is March 20th this year. Um, rumor has it in future years will be the same. It is the uh, deadline that you must meet for the 471. So you have to jump through all the traditional hoops at E-rate that you would have to uh, for their funding. And you must be able to answer or get answer to the detailed questions in PIA review. If you have a provider that is putting in your fiber connection for you, USAC may ask things like how many strands of fiber are going in the ground? How many of them will be reserved for school district use? Are any of them going to be available for other use? And things like that. We can put that together in your plan and really outline what it says with help from our partners. Um, but one of the things that you're really gonna have to do, especially if you're not technically minded at the district, is do communicate with your provider and with the support partners for our Illinois Connectivity Initiative to make sure that you can answer those questions completely for USAC in order to secure your funding. Because like I said before, you must obtain USAC approval in order to get the state funding. It is part of the legislation. So how can you get support? There are several partners offering support for this process. Um, I did acronyms, so please bear with me as I explain who they are. The first one is Education Superhighway, our non-for-profit partner out of California. I've labeled as ESH. ESH is our partner for awareness and we'll be reaching out to school districts if we think that the funding is something uh, that you might be interested in. They're also a great resource for project planning and connection with providers. So if you find that you submit a 470 and have no responses to your 470, they're really good about uh, going out and kind of shaking the fences and finding a provider that might meet your needs. They also offer wonderful tools and templates that you can use in order to write up RFPs for your 470 and really detail out everything that you need. Uh, there is a whole team for Illinois. Uh, Brad Weger is our main contact, and so I've put his email address here, but he can connect you uh, with all kinds of support for the team. So um, that is a great resource that we have in Education Superhighway. You will probably be hearing from them if we have targeted you as a school district we think might benefit from the funding. Then I come to the LTC. 
Um, the Learning Technology Center of Illinois is um, really excited to help with this process. I will be offering grant writing support. I'm willing to work one-on-one -on -one with districts on that application for ISBE. I'm also willing to kind of sit back and give you my notes or take a review of what you've written and um, give you tips and tricks. I already have a document ready to go with some suggestions of what districts might include in their application. Uh, I offer also E-rate application support. So this year, uh, like we did last year, we will be having a tour, I like to call it, of um, applicants across the state and we'll be offering 470 sessions in November, December and 471 sessions in um, January, February. I realize the deadline is not until March, but I like to get my sessions over and done with. So those of you who also uh, pull double duty and focus on uh, state testing can do that come March 1st. I'm also here for awareness and general questions and answers. I can also connect you to our partners at ESH and at ISB. So if you have any questions, my email is down there at the bottom. Please do not hesitate to reach out. That is why I'm here as your um, uh, E-rate coordinator in the state. The state match funding support, um, ISB, will be supporting the funding by doing the following. They are in charge of the application development, release, and review. They are the official question and answer holders. So if there is a question that you pose to me that um, we want to go ahead and take up to ISB, they will be posting a question and answer like they do for all of their funding pages. They will verify discount percentages for USAC as they typically have done in the past. And they will also award the grant to schools who receive the funding. Um, our contacts at ISB that we've been working with on our project are Mary Reynolds, who is the Executive Director of Innovation and Secondary Transformation, and the reason they got their own slide, because her title is so long, um, and Eric Grocky, who is our new ISB Principal Consultant for the program. So we are happy to have both of them on board. If you have questions that you'd like to ask directly of ISB, you can ask those by email at broadband at isb.net. Um, they also have an ISB website. If you do a search from the ISB website page uh, for state match funding, you should be able to pull up right the broadband section of the ISB website. Please do not do this grant alone. Um, we are here to help and our goal is to make everyone as successful as we can get them. Um, we really do want to share out the state funding and thank the legislature uh, for the opportunity that they are providing. So please do not do this alone. Um, check out the USAC page. I know they're offering a uh, regional training in uh, October, I believe it's the 22nd and 23rd in Illinois. So the Midwest training will be um, in Palatine this year. Um, I believe it's at Harper College. So do check out that website if you want to visit the USAC regional training. Again, LTC Illinois will be offering uh, workshops statewide for the 470 and 471, and you can reach out to me at any time. Uh, I've also listed the Education Superhighway website, so you can check out more information on them and the services that they, they offer, as well as the direct link to the ISB broadband page where all of those um, things and information are contained. That's also where you will find the state applications when they are available. So that was a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, I am open to taking questions. Um, again, you'll see my email address and our website down here at the bottom. Also, if you'd like a copy of this presentation, you can get to it at bit.ly forward slash LTC, those are capitals, state match in lowercase, um, if you would like a copy of the presentation to share with others. Brian, do we have any questions? There are none in the uh, question and answer. However, I have gone through and um, allowed everyone that would like to have the opportunity to uh, talk, to have an opportunity to ask you a question. Um, if it's not working for you, if you're on an older version of Zoom or you just don't have a microphone or whatever, you can feel free to type your question in the Q&A also, but uh, everyone should now have the ability to unmute themselves and ask a question if they'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my sharing of my screen. That way I can see if anything gets posted in sure. the Q&A. Um, while we've got people um, thinking about or typing a question or getting ready to unmute, um, I do want to point out that if I can get the Zoom to come back up here on mine so I can share. There we go. We do have webinars occurring uh, just about every Tuesday. 
um, ranging from classroom innovation to E-rate network, uh, digital access stuff, um, as well as some specific tech tools. If you go to ltcillinois.org backslash webinars, you can find this page and you can register for future webinars or you can also go back and uh, check out some webinars you may have already uh, you've missed. Um, but feel free to go ahead and register for as many as you'd like or, or share this resource with other people. Um, okay, I see a question from Kate real quick, Brian. Um, excellent question, Kate. Uh, her question is, is there a max amount that is allowed for the state matching grant? Um, nowhere in the legislation is there a topped out amount. Uh, we did uh, do some very fancy math figures and figuring out how much to ask for from the legislature and we believe that we have it pretty well covered. So uh, please do go find out. Uh, what a build to a school district building would cost you. At this time, there is no um, max that we are aware of. Uh, some school districts have reported due to the um, 470 and 471 process being a part of the bidding process that has really helped to drive down the cost of those builds and um, applications that they're receiving now are drastically decreased from what they saw uh, several years ago. So uh, if you haven't checked for a while, please do file a 470 and uh, go out for bid. Uh, nothing commits you when you file your 470. If it's something that your school district um, is scared off from at that point, that's fine. Uh, but it's nothing will hurt you by going ahead and asking for bids. Hey, Mindy, real quick here, we had a question. Um, can you possibly post the bit.ly link again? Oh, sure. Let me throw it, um, if you um, throw it in the chat. That'd be great. We do have okay. another question also in the Q&A. Okay. You asked me the question while I post the bit.ly. Sure. Uh, the question comes from Aaron. He's asking, can we talk to potential vendors about build outs before filing a form 470 or should we wait until after? Great question, Aaron. Um, so the rules prohibit you from signing any contracts or making any deals with vendors prior to the 470 process. However, several school districts have reported in talking to different vendors out in the field, it gives you a better idea of what it is you might be looking for. So nothing prohibits you from going ahead and doing your own research um, and reaching out or talking to vendors at this point, once you do file that 470 form that is an open bid, you wanna be very clear to not specifically mention the vendor um, or any kind of uh, types of connections or um, equipment that would disqualify other vendors. So you wanna be very general in your explanation of what you need um, to allow for all uh, applicants to come to the table at that time. You also should limit conversations with any of those vendors in that 28 day period. Um, you wanna be able to really prove to USAC that any question that was answered to you by one vendor, that question and answer was also shared out to all other interested vendors. So that 28 day time frame is um, kind of the quiet time, but you can go ahead and start your research now if you'd like. Awesome. Are there any other questions? Uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask or uh, type them in the Q&A box. And I just want to throw out one extra step. If you um, attended today's webinar and you're finding that it's not something that, you, that really meets the needs of your district, but you're aware of districts around you that could really benefit from this funding, please do uh, share this recording with them. Uh, have them reach out to uh, one of the Illinois Classroom Connectivity Partners. We really do want to help school districts get this funding and get connectivity for their students. All right, as we wait to just make sure there's not any last second questions, um, I do want to remind everyone that the uh, this will be the recording will be sent to you tomorrow. And if it's okay with you, Mindy, I will add the bit.ly link to that email as well. Okay, that's great. Um, sure. I see a question from Tim. Um, Tim's asking, are these E-rate funds coming from our priority two funding or is it something that can come from priority one? Also an excellent question. These are priority one funding amounts. So this is not something that's going to limit your equipment and purchasing in priority two. This is connectivity, which comes out of the first category, and there is no cap or formula on priority one. Um, that's what really makes this part of the program exciting. It's also what really uh, provides a lot of scrutiny on USAC's end to make sure that that funding is being spent cost effectively. So it is out of the connectivity piece, which is priority one. 
And there are certain boxes that you'll want to choose or selections you'll want to make on the 470. So please do visit one of our um, 470 application sessions or reach out to me. Um, also, sh I should add while we are on here, I know we had a couple of consultants on the page. If you're a school district that uses a consultant, I serve school districts either way. So please do, um, if you're using a consultant or you are a consultant, feel free to reach out to me with your questions. I'm here to help all Illinois schools, uh, not just the ones who are applying on their own. All right, I guess do one last call for any questions. Um, and as always, as Mindy mentioned there, feel free to email her if, if you have any questions after the fact, if you don't think about it until later on tonight. Okay, I've got 401. Uh, unless somebody throws up a question here pretty soon, we'll go ahead and uh, end the recording. Uh, just want to say thank you again for joining us and thanks to Mindy for sharing her uh, magical E-rate knowledge with everyone. <laughs> thanks, Brian. All right. Thank you, everyone.